Amen. That's good. That's We're live. All right, go. You ready? Yes. He that let's have our say our mantra. He, he that dwelleth in the, the secret place, place of the Most High, high shall abide under the, the shadow, shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. Shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because he has made the Lord, which is, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall not trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on my high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank yes. you so right now, oh God, for this time of you showing forth what you want your people to hear. Father, I thank you, oh God, that you found me worthy, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Not only myself, oh God, but even the hearers of, oh God, you find them worthy, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we wear this, this world like a loose garment. And I ask now, oh God, that you allow this world to drop off of me, oh God. Oh God. Father, you take on your glory upon me, oh God. Use me as you will, oh God. Thank you for allowing me to be your mouthpiece, God. Okay. I move myself totally out of the way, oh God, because I realize without you I am nothing, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I ask right now, oh God, that you would bless our past as he traveled, oh God, that you would keep him in a perfect mind of peace, oh God, that you would bless Shayla also, oh God, allow her to encourage him even the more so. We ask, oh God, that you would bless our first lady, oh God, Pastor Pat, in the name of Jesus. Watch and keep her, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for healing her, oh God, for delivering her, oh God, for loosing her, oh God, the afflictions that come up against her, oh God. It's just a life thing, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we're standing on the manifestation, oh God. We believe it's already done, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask now that you would bless everyone under the sound of my voice, oh God. Everyone, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that we will be believers of the word, oh God, not just hearers, but doers thereof, that it would take root, oh God, just as you dropped in my spirit on this morning, oh God, how you said, oh God, how one planted, oh God, how one watereth, oh God, and you give it the increase, oh God, we ask it now, oh God, for the ones that have been watered, for who have been planted, for the ones that have been watered, oh God, God, we believe in you now that the increase shall come in the mighty name of Jesus, that we will see souls saved, oh God, that they will come unto you, oh God, ask him what must I do, oh God, and that they will walk this thing out, oh God, from a real church, from a real Bible-believing church, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. We thank you, oh God, we thank you, oh God. Again, I thank God for this opportunity to be up here. Um, I all, all want to honor my pastors in their absence. And again, I thank them for trusting me. I remember the first time that they asked me to come up and speak. I remember saying to my mom, because they weren't going to be here at all. And I remember saying to my mother, what an honor that is. And I don't think most know what an honor that is, because a lot of times, when many women of go of house shepherds go out of town, they don't let anybody come up in their pulpit. Mm -hmm. 
They don't. There's going to be somebody sitting there to watch over. There's going to be somebody sitting there to make sure that money go a certain way. They're going to make sure. But they entrusted me to run the whole service. I thank God that they did. Even though I kept saying to them, I wanted them to be there. I wanted them to be there. But the thing of it was that the fact that they trusted me. And that to me, that meant more than anything. Anything. And I thank God for them for loving us the way they do. I'm not going to personalize it. But for loving us the way they do. I was asked to make sure that I mentioned this. Is that today was supposed to be our church celebration. Three year celebration. Yes. But because pastor had to go out of town. Pastor appreciation. Sorry. Pastor appreciation. Pastor appreciation. <laughs> pastor's yeah. appreciation. That um, because they had to go out of town. That we will be celebrating on next Sunday. So if y'all want to just hold your love. All the praise and all your accolades. And all those and everything that you have, if you can just hold on to it for one Hallelujah. more small week, on. one more small week, oh, don't go to no store, you don't trust yourself, <laughs> take it and put it somewhere and tuck it and forget about it until Sunday so we can make sure we bless our pastors real good in words and in deed. Oh, amen. 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 Praise God. Now I think I got all the admin stuff out the way. I think I do. Good job. I need you saints praying. Y'all know how I am. You know how I am. I never trust myself. I remember the last time that I spoke when it was all said and done, I was sweating bullets. Nobody really knew it afterwards until I told them. I was sweating bullets. And I turned and asked my shepherd, as long as I've been doing this, and I have been in ministry now since I was 35 years old, and I don't mind telling people how old I am. I'm 60 now. Um, as long as I've been in ministry, I've never gotten to the place where I'm comfortable when I stand up here. Mm -hmm. I'm always nervous when I come in and I'm like, Mom, please pray for me. And I'm shaking in my boots. And I asked Pastor, I said, Pastor, do you ever go through this? And he said, every time I get up there, I'm going to ask him, I'm so glad to know I'm not the only one who feels that way. And then I said to myself, but then the day that I don't feel nervous, I'm not going to preach because I know I'll be doing it out of myself and I won't be that person. Other thing I wanted to say was this, the other thing that I shared with my mom, that I understand how sacred this desk is. And I understand that there are those who have struggles. But I cannot for the life of me see how you can get behind the sacred desk, preach the word of God, and some of it so anointed you would not even know, you know, that they have this struggle behind the scene. And when you leave out from behind here, you go out and do things that will bring shame unto God. Mm -hmm. I take this very serious and I don't take it lightly at all. That's why when I always tell the people of God how much I love them, I mean it's so, I mean, my prayer has always been, God, allow me to love your people the way you do. Mm -hmm. That means yeah. that when I see them, I want to see you in them, whether or not they're acting that way or not. I still want to see God. I want to know that the God in them is there somewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where, so I love hard. When I love, I love real hard. And my other thing is, is that it's hard for me because when they bring me hurt, I hurt hard. I know how to go ahead and get rid of it, but it still hurts. Mm -hmm. You know, when you get a wound, it, irregardless of whether it's still bleeding, it's still there and it hurts. But I get to a place where I learn, you know what? I can't stop loving them. I, I, I just can't stop loving them because I'm going to do this thing the way God wants it to be done. I want to make sure I'm doing it right. Last thing I always say is this. A lot of people tell me that when I hug, I hug hard. <laughs> my <laughs> prayer is, <laughs> my prayer is that God, I want you to engulf them with your love. Yeah. So when I hug, I want them to feel God. I don't want them to say that you're just to know you. <laughs> I want them to feel God. Because you don't realize what people are going through. You don't know what they had to go through to get to where they're standing in front of you. Mm -hmm. So you got to be real careful how you handle people. Yeah. A lot of times they may not speak words, but a simple hug. And mm -hmm. no matter how, you know, a lot of times if I'm pulling you in, it's because God's telling me, pull them in closer. Mm -hmm. Pull them in closer. Mm -hmm. I'm pulling you in, and it breaks some things off of them. Mm -hmm. Stuff that they don't even, I don't ask them. I don't, I don't need to know your stuff. You know, God knows it. I don't ask them. 
but I'm doing it from the heart. I'm so sincere in what I'm doing, and I'm doing it from the heart. And you see things break off of people. They just Amen. break off of people. So much so, my examples, and I didn't even know it was doing this. One of my babies at my daycare, her mom came and told me about it. And I'm doing this just to build up where I'm going. Her mom came and told me, she said, something that me and my family has never done, and my mom and I have never done, was we never really told each other that we love them, love each other. And at my, you know, my business, I, I'm always saying I love you, and I mean it. You know, I'm always telling my babies, y'all give a hug. You know, they're always hugging before they see them come in, each other come in, they're hugging. During the day, they're hugging. If they hurt each other, they run up, I'm sorry, they're hugging. When they get ready to leave, everybody run up, and the parents stand and wait. They're hugging because they know their friend is getting ready to leave. Mm -hmm. So they said that, she told me, she said that her daughter went up to her mom out of nowhere and said, Grammy, I just love you. I don't know where this baby says that. Can I just give you a hug? And went up and gave grandma a hug. It touched grandma so much it almost made her cry because she's not used to it. She's so not used right. to it. And she came to me, she said, Miss G, I know that's where she get it from. She said, because that's what you do here. That's what you do here. She said, I know that's where my baby get it from. She said, because we don't do that. We don't do that. And it's the small things, those little things that to you is so normal for me. It's just normal for me to do. You don't know how you those small things impact other people, from a child even to an adult. You just don't know how those things impact them. And that's why I always say you never know where people are. I would not have known that that would have touched that grandmother to know the grandmother the way it did. I would have never known. Mm -hmm. With that being said, we're going to go into my um, lesson, which God dropped on my heart. And y'all, please, 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 I'm asking you that you pray for me. The title of my sermon is, It's Later Than You Think. It's Later Than You Think. And the subtopic is, The Offender and the Offended. Um, we're going through a phase now where we're getting ready to end our series on offense. At least that's what I'm thinking because next Sunday will be the first Sunday. So um, we're going to be going into another. And if you could, we want to go to 1 Samuel, the 18th chapter, starting at the 5th. And again, I need you guys praying for me because... When I tell you I toiled with this, I did. I, it was like, okay, God, how do you want me to stack this? How do you want me to stack it? Sister Jordan, I want to say to you on, and Mom was sitting there, she's my witness, on Wednesday night when you brought forth your lesson, and I would say your word. When I tell you, I said, Mom, I mean, I was sitting there clapping my hands down. <laughs> she's doing it exactly the way the Lord gave it to me. Everything, I, I kid you not, everything that the Lord was giving me, you preached it. So I said, okay, God, we got to take this a whole different route. <laughs> so it don't look like we're on repeat, you know, and, but still a lot of people to be blessed. I mean, I, I commend you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. You blessed me so. You really, really, really did. And I thank you for allowing God to use you the way he did. Okay, we're going to start reading at the fifth verse. And David went out, whithersoever Saul sent him, and behaved himself wisely and behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war, and he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servants. And it came to pass as they came, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistines, that the women came out of all cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul with their tambourines or tabrets, with joy and with instruments of music. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. If you will say with me, those are just words. They're just words. They're just words. They're just, They're words. just words. And Saul was very wroth and the saying displeased him. And he said, they have ascribed unto David ten thousands. And to me, they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? And Saul eyed David from that day forward. And it came to pass on the morrow that the devil, that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul, and he prophesied in the midst of the house. And David played with his hands as other times, as other times. And there was a javelin in Saul's hand. 
What kind of hatred do you have in your heart? And Saul cast the javelin, for he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. And David avoided out of his presence twice. And Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. Therefore Saul removed him from him and made him his captain over a thousand. And he went out. I thank God for your presses. And he went out and came in before the people. And David behaved himself wisely in his ways, and the Lord was with him. Father God, we ask you now that you sanctify this place even more so. We thank you for the word of God. We ask now, oh God, again, that you would get into my mouth, oh God. Father, you preach this word. You preach this word, oh God. You preach this word, oh God. And you give me the words that you would like for me to say. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. Um, we could, I could have read all the way down, and, I, and for the sake of time, <clears throat> I said, you know what, I'll just read here. And my prayer is that you finish reading down, and even then, even more so, if you could read the chapter before. I always say any time that I preach that, you know, it's okay to take my word, but the word of God stands true. Always go behind us and read it for yourself and get it for yourself. So if you can read it before the before and this chapter, it'll help you get a more bigger clarity with the things that I'm about to say. Um, when Pastor Pat called me on the other day to ask me to stand and speak for her, I immediately, I never ever say no, not unless I know I'm going to be out of town for whatever reason. But um, I immediately said to her, whatever you need me to do, Pastor Pat, I'm there for you. She gave me the topic that she wanted me to preach from, but gave me the option of being able to preach either way I needed to go, whatever God would have given me. And I would have done so and still will. And um, when she did immediately, immediately, the story of David and Saul got into, I mean, just like it just dropped into my spirit. And the Lord just started showing me different ways and different things to um, what he wanted, the points he wanted to bring out. And he said that when I read it, and that's why I, I, I wanted to center on the point in where the women made the comment about Saul and his thousands and David and the 10,000. But I wanted you to go up a little bit more, if you don't mind, where this says that Saul was the one that put David in charge. He was the one that assigned him. He was the one that did it. And then immediately when words, they're just words. When the words came out the lady's mouth, he immediately took offense. He immediately, because he was looking at the numbers, he immediately took offense. And one of my things, and I won't say it's a pet peeve, but it's my wonder why's, is that how come if somebody give, if I want to give accolades, just like how I keep calling stickiness, it's because... <laughs> She's done a lot and said a lot in this short time that blessed me, that lined up with what God has been giving me. But it does not mean that I love Sister Diane any less, that I love right, Pastor right. Sublime any less, that I don't love, um, and I was wondering where you were the other night, I'm going to call you, that I don't love Sister Diana, did I get it right? Diana. that I didn't, don't love her any less than um, Brother Sam, Sam, I got you right, I knew that. Um, <laughs> that I don't love them any less. Mm -hmm. Love them all the same, all the same, mm -hmm. nothing. So it always baffled me that when somebody was to call somebody's name out, immediately somebody would sit there in their heart, they'll think they didn't call my name. I did just as much as such and such and such. Why they didn't call my name? Why mm -hmm. are you taking that personal? Mm -hmm. Why are you in, a lot of people don't, they refuse to call names because they don't want to get in trouble when it comes to them. Why are you taking, it's, that's a small thing, it's just words. Or if I'm calling names and my heart was to call your name and I forgot, it's just words. Why are we taking it so personal? Mm -hmm. You know, and I say that to say this is that when it comes to offenses, and why are y'all taking it so personal? Why are we as saints of God? I have to put myself in that also. Why are we taking it so personal? Why can't we? Hear it, let it roll off our back. I always say become wet back when it comes to being in God because you're going to, you're going to be faced with a lot of stuff. A lot of things are going to get said. A lot of things are going to be done to you. Become wet back. 
Let it roll off and keep going. Because our sole purpose is for us to make it home to Christ. Amen. We have people who are assigned to us. And if you're walking around with an offense, you become the offender. Mm -hmm. I've always said hurt people hurt people. They hurt. When you're walking around hurting, mm -hmm. before you know you're going around hurting somebody else and you don't even realize that you are. Mm -hmm. Hurt people hurt people. So why are you walking around feeling that way? I have a thing that if I feel like I offended you immediately, immediately, because I want to make sure my stuff stay clean, and I want to be able to pray and get you through. I'm not saying that I'm perfect. Lord knows I'm not. I still got a ways to go. But one thing that I will do, if I feel like I have offended you, I'll go directly to you. Sister, I, I hope I didn't offend you. Did I, I didn't mean that was not my heart. I said what I said because. Or I did what I did because. Mm -hmm. But if I promise you it was no, no, I'm not trying to hurt you, push you out. If anything, I'm trying to push you closer to God. And people will get angry with you even on that wise. When you're just calling out their stuff mm -hmm. just to get them in a place in God. Mm -hmm. That's why when the pastors, I loved it. When the pastors you feel offend you, all they're trying to do is get you in a place in mm -hmm. God. But leadership, on. all we're trying to do is push you to your purpose. That's all we're doing. Mm -hmm. That's when we come correct with it and we're speaking in the things of God. Mm -hmm. See, so I got to make sure I say that because there are those of us, we, like I said, everybody who say they say not say. There are those of us who operate in a spirit of malice. Mm -hmm. Take Saul. Yeah. He put David in front of an army. Sis prayed the prayer, and I don't know if anybody else remembers when she said that some of us are in jobs that we don't need to be. Yeah. That it wasn't set for us. Mm -hmm. That yeah. the enemy put you there. Yeah. God moved him out of that spot. The enemy placed him there to have him killed. Have yeah. David killed. Mm -hmm. Here you thanking God that you got this position. Oh God, I'm about to make all this money. I'm about to get all this accolade. And these people, you can set up to get took, taken out literally. Mm -hmm. The enemy has I set you up. And you have accepted the position. You have accepted the job. Not knowing that it was meant to kill you and take right. you out. But we thank God that Saul already knew God is with them. Because mm -hmm. all of this stuff that I'm doing to him, and he's still coming back home, he's still giving God praise. God got the hands of protection on him. Mm -hmm. So now he got to do something for himself. I got to take him out for himself. This is what he's thinking. I got I to take this man out with my own hands because apparently the stuff that I'm assigning is not working. Amen. We thank God that he loved us just so much that he'll put people in our stead to pray for us even in our craziness. When we don't understand the stuff that we're getting ourselves into, how he allowed the intercessors to stand up and pray prayers of faith for us. Right. That get us out of stuff that we got ourselves in unknowingly. Yeah. We thank God that I need them praying. Yeah. I need you moving on my behalf. And you don't even know it. That's why I say when the, offense, when the offender the offender becomes the offense. The offense becomes the offender. Mm -hmm. It works hand in hand. Mm -hmm. You got to know how to get that stuff out of your spirit real, real fast. People need you praying on their behalf. Yeah. You got to get that yeah. stuff out of you. If you you know when you're offended. Yeah. Because something is just not right. Mm -hmm. You're walking and stuff. You know what? And you angry at everybody mm -hmm. for no reason. That's you right. kicking the dog. Taking the kids out the door, yelling at your wife and the children you, because somebody else did it. Yeah. And your whole stuff yeah. up changed because of it. Yeah. Whole stuff changed because of it. Right. I've heard my daughter say to her husband plenty of times, I don't know what you got going on at the job <laughs> or what not happened because he's a supervisor. Which one of them workers? And I did something, but I'm gonna need you to go back there and get it dealt with, because what you're not gonna do is come up in here mm, come on, and you destroy my peace. Amen. Amen. She would tell them that Amen. quick. She would tell them that. Amen. They see you know you see him coming back down the stairs with his tail tucked, and he knows he was wrong, and he will go up and he'll apologize. And I thank God that God has humbled him that way. He will go and he will apologize, baby. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And she, I thought so, <laughs> you know, but to know her, that's, she's a funny, she's just, well, hilarious to make you laugh. I thought so. And they get it right and they keep it moving. Rather than walk around huffing and puffing, and I've seen them like that, and I had to minister to them from a pastor standpoint of view, that this is not the way. We don't handle things like that. Not when you call yourself saved. 
You don't walk around for 24 hours talking about you angry and upset with your mate. No, we don't do that. That's the person that's supposed to be your lifeline. We don't do that. We don't handle it the way the world handles it. You need to make it right. But he did, I don't care what he did. But she did, I don't care what she did. You make it right. You make it right. And you don't go to sleep like that. You got five minutes on to get it done. The offenses come. Now let's get it corrected and we're going to keep it moving. Because one thing that we realize is that life is too short. Yes. It is not promised. One minute you're here, the next minute you're gone. Mm-hmm. We realize that 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 resonates with us more so than anything. Again, for those of you who know her testimony, one minute she was here, mm-hmm. next minute she was gone. Thank God for His grace and mercy that He brought her back instantly. Thank God. So in our mindset, when we view, when we see people having strife against each other, the first thing we'll say is, "Life is too short. Y'all need to get that straight." Y'all mm-hmm. need to get that straight. Because guess what? God can call them home and you never got that thing right. Mm-hmm. Unforgiveness yeah. is the thing that will cause you destruction. You cannot walk around here holding mm-hmm. grudges and all of these That's isms right. and schisms when it comes to people, not just people of God, because we are assigned to pray for these folks. Amen. And you're sitting here yeah. walking around with this right. stuff going yeah. on in you, yeah. and you can't give a prayer. They need Amen. you. Amen. They need you yeah. to pray to get them out of the mess that they are in. And you walking around here holding grudges. Mm. Mm. You let, as I always say, and I took it up from mm. the nickel because of inflation, but you let a quarter hold up a dollar. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> you let it hold you it up. Say? Man, <laughs> please, get that quarter up. Put that dollar together and keep going. Y'all yeah. get 50 50, and we're going to keep on moving. Mm. And if I have to give 75 25, we still going to keep on moving. Mm. If I have to give you that whole dollar so that we can keep on moving, that's what we're about to do. Because we can, we're going to make it to heaven together. Mm. I will see you walk in along with me together. We're going to do this thing together. I am assigned to do yeah. so. And not only am I assigned to do so, I willingly want to do it. Amen. I want to do it. I don't have to do it begrudgingly. I don't have to go to God and say, well, she did such and such and such to me. I just don't know how I know. Mm-hmm. You don't have to worry about that when it comes to minister Gloria. What I'm going to do is God said pray. First thing I'm going to do is release you of it. Then I'm going to release myself of it. And if I have to do it opposite way around, we're going to do it. When you come to me and say that I'm, baby, look, it's already gone. I don't even worry about that. What's going on with you? I want to know what's going on. All is well with you. And we're going to keep loving and keep walking in Christ. Amen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're not going to let it hold up what God planned this for our life. That's now, when right. we talk about it's later than you think, when you look at the times that we're in right now and the stuff that's going on, yes. you're mm-hmm. not going to tell me that Jesus is not soon to come. come yeah. on. You're not going to tell me that he's not. I, I refuse to believe. Yes, I know we've been hearing it from ages on end that when I was coming up in ministry and when I was coming up in the church and ever since I was a little child, you heard that Jesus is soon to come. Mm-hmm. Jesus is soon to come. Jesus is soon to come. Put it in the comments. Put it in the comments. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Jesus is Praise soon God. to come. Jesus huh? is soon to come. And he is. Yeah. Guys, I kid you not. It says wars and rumors of wars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what the word of God says. That these are the signs. That's right. when, and that's the other part that I'm getting ready to go to. And if you will go with me to Matthew 24. Matthew 24, and when you have it, please say, I have it. Praise God. I'm trying to get the screen to get a little bigger, but it's okay, y'all pray with me. And I want to read it in an Amplified. And I'm going to start at that third verse. You got it? Third verse? We're going to start at the third verse, and I'm reading it in an Amplified, Matthew 24. And I'm going to read down to the ninth. And it says, while he was seated on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately and said, tell us, praise God, tell us when will this take place? And they were talking about end times because he had spoken of it in the scriptures before. And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end, the completion of, And I'm sorry, guys, like I said, I don't have mine. The completion of consummation of the age. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. And I want to stop right there to say this. And if some become offended, 
I'm only preaching what God said to put in my spirit. That's who I am. And I, I, I'm more afraid of him, and I, you've heard me say this before, I'm never more afraid of him than I am of man. And I can look you dead in the eye and say that. I'm more afraid of him than I am of man. People have this thing of always wanting to chase down a word. I'm going to say that again. People have this thing of always wanting to chase down a word. And when I say that, I'm talking about when it comes to the things of prophecy. Mm -hmm. What I do, because I know I operate in the office of prophecy, I know this. But I want, it's hard for me to get a word out of me. And most people know that. I'd rather go to God. Now, if God tell me to speak it, yes, I will speak it out of the obedience of God. But many times when he gives me stuff, I go to God and I start praying for situations. So because of it, I found that when I first started coming up in ministry, one thing that had happened at the church that I was attending, a prophet got up and he called me out. And I would keep, I've always used to keep it hidden. You know, my gifting, I kept it hidden because I know how people are when it comes to prophecy. And he says to me, he says, uh, he called me up, woman of God, prophetess of God, stand up. And I stood up and immediately when he said prophecy, something went down my spine. Like, oh. And he says that God has put prophecy in your mouth. And at the time I was going through a sickness, had just got um, diagnosed with bronchitis. They said, had I not come in a few more hours, I would have waited a few more hours, I would have had pneumonia. So I'm getting over it, and I was at the last stage with the coughs. You, you, you just had problems getting rid of the coughs. And I would be out ministering, doing missionary work, and when I'm praying, the coughs would get started. And he was able to tap into all of that. So he began to tell me, he said, that you're concerned about that cough that you have seen, that you cannot get rid of it. And I'm looking at him not. He said, but God said he's going to heal you of that cough, and you don't have to worry about your prophecies being cut off. He's adding 5,000 to your heart. And I'm like, my God, my God, you know, and immediately, you know, you just get caught up because this man tapped into what I prayed to God. Mm -hmm. Shortly thereafter, the church wasn't even over good. I'm getting notes. If you got a word for me, please make sure you give it to me. I'm going out to church. Sister, if you want to pray for me, you can go ahead and pray for me because I'm ready for my word. I want my one of my five thousand. Immediately, I wasn't offended, but I'm like, why do we have itchy ears? Mm. When you can go the same God that I go to and I pray to, why you can't pray yeah. with your own word? And all I'm doing is giving you, if I'm coming up to you, talking to you, I'm giving you confirmation. That's all I'm doing is giving confirmation. I'm not giving you something that you haven't heard before. Because that's what prophecy is. It's confirmation. Affirmation and exhortation. That's what prophecy is. So I shouldn't be giving you anything that should catch you by surprise. So I have to think about that. So now I notice that we're in this age now where everybody is wanting a word. They're wanting a word and they're running after a word. But that's not the thing that God has for us. That's not what he wants for us. He wants us to be able to, he loves communing with us. He loves having relationships with us. And then he loves being able to send up the ones that he's appointed to us and give us that confirmation that, oh, yeah, he did say that to you. Mm -hmm. And so it shouldn't catch you by surprise. If a dream comes to you and all of a sudden you are in conversation and I'm enlightening you and you're like, dog, I had this dream that all I'm doing is confirming what God has already spoken to you or said to you. Mm -hmm. So you shouldn't be shaking in it. So why are you chasing the word? And when it comes to that, that's when you get deceived because they can tell you anything because they know you come. I can tell you anything because you won't believe What's coming out my mouth, and whether it's God lined up or not, and it's called a familiar spirit. Mm. Let's try not to be amongst named amongst them, and that's the first thing I was like, God, and that's the first thing that you talk about. You will be deceived, even the very elect mm -hmm. will be deceived. Mm -hmm. So what I'm not, when it comes to the, a word, somebody gives me a word, I'm not. I've got enough word prophecies in me <laughs> that God can fulfill. fulfill. Yeah. When he could call me home, and they still probably will all be fulfilled. Amen. I get enough word. I've got enough word. So when more come, I promise you it's because God. I promise you, if y'all see somebody call me up, it's because it's true. You can say, yeah, and everybody can turn around and watch and listen to that word that's coming out. Because you know that it is God. Because I'm not chasing it. Mm -hmm. What I need, God equips me with. And he lets me know. And then he sends people in my life for my life. 
I need y'all praying for me. So when I say that, I don't mean it just lightly. I need y'all praying for me. I truly, truly need y'all praying for me. Let me finish this out. Praise God. Okay, that was the first part. Jesus answered, and I'm down in the fourth verse, um, answered them, be careful, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive thee. I'm at the fifth, and deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not frightened or troubled, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. We said he is coming, mm -hmm. for no man knows the day or the hour. For nations will arise against nations and kingdoms against kingdom, and there will be famines. What are we in right now? There will be famines and earthquakes in places after place. Mm -hmm. what, what, what's going on with the earth right now is sick. I tell everybody the earth is sick. Mm -hmm. All this, I'm sorry, I'm, yeah, I'm reading that tonight. All this is but the beginning, the early pains of the birth pain, the intolerable anguish. The ninth verse says, Then they will hand you over to suffer afflictions and tribulations and put you to death. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake, because you name the name of Christ. That's happening now. Just in case some of you didn't know, people are being martyred in today, in our today. Don't think, okay, it had to reach my door. Give it enough time. You will be persecuted just because you name the name of Christ. I've had it happen to me. I can't tell you how they've been accused of being a witch and all. Because I name the name of Christ. Because they heard me praying. And I pray in tongues. Y'all don't need to know what I'm saying. This is between me and my God. So why do y'all got a problem with that? So now you want to go around and tell the whole neighborhood she's a witch. You should hear stuff that she be chanting. She's a witch. But I thank God that I serve a real, true, living Savior. Because when this person said that, and she said it in front of a whole lot of young people. And when she said it, I looked at her and I said, I said, you know what, I love you. And I meant that. That thing, I meant that. I didn't just say it because, okay, this is what Jesus would do. No, mm -hmm. I meant it. And I said to her, and standing up in front of those young, young people, you know, the normal response would have been, you don't mind, why are you like, you know, to give what she put out. Right. I couldn't mm -hmm. never tell her how much I love her because at that moment, God allowed me to feel her hurt, mm -hmm. her offense, mm -hmm. that there was something lacking. So all I could say to her was, I love you. Mm -hmm. And I'm so sorry that you're going through what you're going through. I said, but I love you so much. There was a young lady that was sitting in the midst of it, and I saw her because she had her head down. And immediately her head jerked up and she looked at me and her face was like, how could you say that to her when she just said what she said about you? People are watching us. Mm -hmm. Come on. For us who name the name of Christ, for us who carry the mantle of God on our shoulders, people are watching us. When I told y'all about the, the situation, and I don't think y'all was in it when I shared that, with the situation I had at the church, a church when a very saint persecuted me and my family, a saint of God assigned somebody to kill my son. A saint of God. A saint of God. And the people at the church, yes, and the people at the church watched this whole thing play out. You want to know what I kept telling my camp? Let God be God. God, you vindicate us. Let God be God. I told them, don't try. They wanted to come out strong. Don't try to say a word. Pray. 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 Because I hurt. I was torn. I was torn. This was a best friend. We slept together in the same bed at once. Best friend. She was soft. She got jealous of the anointing that God had on my life. She had the exact same type. Why would she do this? In fact, I, I, I thought she was so much more powerful than me. Exact same anointing. Why are you jealous? Why are you jealous? That it would bring that out of you. Why would it bring that out of you? Church watchers played out. They watched me. When I tell you, they watched closely. As I would go in the door, they wanted to see how I would react. She would stand and talk about me right where we could hear it. Ridicule me. Lie on me. Lie on me. But guess what? I didn't say another one word. I didn't say another one word because I truly believe that the truth will still walk itself right up to a lie. And it did. <laughs> it did. I didn't say the word. 
Right. Guess who, <laughs> guess who was blessed because of it? I can't tell you how many young people came to me, texted me, and said, I could not have handled it the way you did. We just don't know how you blessed me because of how you, and I knew that she was lying in all of it. I knew what the stuff that she was doing behind the scenes. And you not once said anything out of the way of it. You just kept loving her. Not only in front of us, but behind the scenes, you kept loving her. You kept loving her. Who do you think it blessed more? Yeah, tore me up. I promise you, behind the scenes, tore me up. I'm over it. I promise you I am. I was over it as it was happening because I didn't want it to get in my spirit. I didn't want to become a soul. I knew that I needed to pray for her. There was something going on for her to hurt that closely. There is something going on. So I had to be in a position to be able to pray and cover her, cover the people who are around her, who kept egging all of this on and had the oh, itchy ears and wanted to see all of this stuff unfold in the midst of a church. I could have got in the middle of the church and show slap out who it would have hurt. Mm. Who it would have hurt. A whole church would have been torn apart. A whole group of people who could have known God because they would have said, if they acted like that here, I might as well stay right outside. I might as well stay where I am. But I refuse to allow the enemy to allow people to walk away not knowing him. Because guess what? It's later than you think. Mm. It's later than you think. I gotta be in a place where I gotta get to pray and get on my knees, keep yes, myself yes. clean, release myself of some stuff, not be offended, and more so not be the offender. I gotta make sure that I'm doing the things that God has assigned me to do. Yeah. I'm more afraid of God than I am of man. Yeah, I am. Yeah. And I don't fear him because of he's an old awesome God, but because I love him so much. Yeah. I don't want yeah, people to get it twisted. It's because I love God so much. And he has shown grace and mercy to me. I wasn't always this perfect person that's standing before you, and I still got a ways to go. But God loved me so, so, so much that he loved me out of my mess. When people put their mouth on me and they didn't know my behind the scenes, they didn't know my story, they didn't know my why. And they still do. No matter what God does for me, they still think I'm that same person. But I don't have to give an account to them. My Amen. account goes to God, and I'm glad he holds it. Amen. He holds it. Yeah. He keeps me. And I thank God that he does. Amen. I can't let a quarter hold up a dollar. Oh, I will not let it happen. Amen. I can't let it happen. Mm. Too many people, they need us. Mm. They need us. Y'all yeah. release it. Whatever it is. And I say to those out there, whatever it is, release it. Release those people who have hurt you in the past. Mm -hmm. I released them. It, that young lady, that did, I released her. The people who came against me, and molested me as a child two or three times, different ones, I release them. I'm not holding that. Mm -hmm. I can't. People need me. They need me praying. They need me praying. The least I can do is that. When I was a child, and I shared this testimony to the day it is long until God calls me on, seven years old, in the moonlight, I got this track from this church, and I always call this preacher out, and I know he's probably gone home to meet his father right now, but his name was Reverend Green. He would come and get us every Sunday as little kids and take us to his house and give us, I mean, take us to church. And he gave out these little tracks, and I sat there in the moonlight reading this track as a child, not knowing the Savior the way I do, reading this track. And when I read the track, they talked of this man that gave his life on the cross for me and died for my sins. At seven years old, I didn't understand the full impact of what sin was mm -hmm. at all. But the thing that got me was that this man died for me. And at the time, I didn't know that this man knew me, but I said at seven years old, he didn't even know me, and he died for me. He loved me so much, he died for me. And I'm laying in the bed with tears coming down my eyes. I was supposed to be asleep mm -hmm. because it was my bedtime. But I wanted to read this book. And I said, because this man loved me so much, and he gave his life for me, the only thing this little seven-year-old girl had was her life. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm going to give my life to him. Mm -hmm. So on the back of the track was this center prayer. And I read the center prayer. And the center prayer said, Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. And I'm saying this to you who are out there who don't know God 
and need to have a relationship or a restoration with him. He said, forgive me of all of my sins. Father, I believe that you died and rose again so that I might have life. Yeah. I repent before you this day, oh God, and I give my life to you. Mm -hmm. I read that poem. Mm -hmm. Father, thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. I prayed that prayer, and at that moment, I kid you not, I kid, I kid you not, at that moment, I felt something touch me. It was like something reached in my heart and pulled something out of me and out of me. And I remember dipping down like, and then I lifted up and turned around. And I wanted to know other than myself and my brothers and sisters who were asleep, who's in this room? What was it that touched me? I promise you, at that moment, my life has never been the same. Yes, I fell numerous of times, but he was always there covering me. He was always there keeping me, protecting me, allowing me to know that he was always there. Because see, I wasn't taught. I gave my life to him, but I didn't know how to be taught. Yeah. But God made sure that he put people in my path for my life. And that's what he does for us. He put people in our path for us. And a lot of times when you come up against stuff, you think that it's stuff coming against you. I promise you, yeah. God's putting people in our lives for our lives. For our lives. When I need to tell you I need you, praying, I don't say that lightly. I don't care what place God has put me in. I don't care if he has me in the valley low or on the mountaintop. I need you praying for me. I need you covering me in prayer. When I'm going through some stuff that you don't know about, stuff that I don't say, I don't talk. Because I believe that God is a healer and a water those that diligently seek him. So I'm in his face. God, you know this is what I got going on. You know this is what I'm dealing with. And what I do is I ask God to put people, put me in people's mind, put me in their spirits. So at that time of prayer, God, they'll call my name out. I don't need to tell you what I'm going through. Because a lot of times, like I said, oh, you can't handle the weight God's placed on you. You just cannot handle it. But God, I want you to pray. If you could, if it's your will, people who have my heart and my best interest at heart, God, lay them, lay my, lay my name on them. Wake them up in their night season, oh God. Pray for them. Call their name out because I promise you I'm doing it for you. Amen. Most of the time I'm up at 2 o'clock in the morning anyway. 3 o'clock anyway. And I promise you when God put people on my heart, sometimes it's people I don't even know and need to drop names. I'm praying for them. Because I don't know what state they're in. Because of the stuff that I have been through in my past, I don't want them to go through it. I don't want to be back experiencing it. So I ask God, Father, you cover them. You give them a real way. Let them know you in a real way. In a real way, God. Not this fake and phony stuff that's coming through. Not this pick and choose word that they want. But God, in a real way. So I say to those who are out there, that our Facebook family, our Facebook friends, that get to know a God that will save, heal, deliver, set free. He knows you. He loves you like none other. Like none other. We ask that you stand to your feet. Praise God. And give God a praise. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray right now, oh God, for the word that has come forth, oh God. Father, I pray now, oh God, that there be somebody out there who needed this word, oh God. Even in the midst of us, oh God, who needed this word, oh God. Allow them to know, oh God, that we will not walk in offense, that we will not walk as offenders, oh God. That we realize that it is later than we think, oh God. You are soon to come, oh God. We want to be in right standing with you, oh God. Create in us a clean heart, oh God. Renew the right spirit in us, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, at this moment, oh God, we pray now that you would bless the saints of God of OIC, oh God. Each and every one, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Keep them, oh God. And we cast all our cares upon you now, oh God, for we know you care for our souls. We cast it off, oh God. Like a loose garment, oh God. We cast it off, oh God. We cast it aside, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we begin to give you praise.